Let's get this party started with some good news. Did you notice that the share count, the share volume on the OTC market has gone up. It's not bouncing, it's climbing, folks. We had 10 billion shares on Friday. Now, just to put this all in perspective for you, February 2021, we were doing 50 to 60 billion shares a day. And two weeks ago, we fell to an unbelievable low I have never seen before of 4.7 billion. It was scary. But something's happened this last week. I don't know what. Is it a trend reversal? God, we're hoping so. We went to 7 billion, then to 8 billion, and Friday, 10 billion. Last time I saw 10 billion was maybe three months ago, and it was coming down through it. 11, 10, 9, 8. So I'm glad to see it going this direction. Hopefully, folks, this will continue. Volume is what the OTC market has been missing, and it is what we need. Now, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website because it's my go-to site whenever I do research on an OTC stock. Honestly, why are you doing a search for current information when this is the only site I have ever found that updates every OTC stock every single day? The SEC and FINRA update this site constantly. So if you're looking for current information, quit searching. It's right here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is ticker PSWW Principal Solar Inc. She finished the day at a penny and a half with gains really not worth mentioning. Now this company didn't have a catalyst today. They did have a PR a couple days ago and they had a filing a couple weeks ago. And both are talking about the same thing and that's why we're looking at this stock. They're going to make some changes that can put some free shares into your account. And I thought you might want to see this before it happens. She's on the pink tier. She's current. And she's got those precious verified profile and transfer agent verified green ticks. I tell you to look for these folks. These are important. This is information that OTC market is validating behind the scenes. I'm not exactly sure what that list is, but it is important and I'm always happy to see it. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us that Principal Solar invests in organizations, people, properties, and technologies that create and deliver next generation opportunities in the renewable energy sectors and natural gas. Now, for not having any catalyst today, what was her relative volume? It was up. She went from 1.3 million to 4.6 million. So people are looking at this stock. Share structure. What do we got for our float? Eh, an average float. Roughly 200 million in the float, almost 400 million outstanding. Not real high, not real low, just your average float. Finances, are they making any money? Well, they weren't up until this last year. Now, that's not $5. It's actually $5,000. They tell us to put three zeros behind it. Not a ton of money. But the only thing you can really say good is that it didn't cost them anything. Cost of revenue was absolutely zero. So they got to keep every penny that they made. You normally see this with digital products. You know, it doesn't cost anything to duplicate something off your hard drive. But I'm not quite sure how they got that money. Disclosures. All right, this is where we're going to start a little bit of research. They don't have any disclosures that actually reveal any important information, but this quarterly financial here does. So we're going to jump into that. So this is their most current financial, March 31st, 2022. Lots of information in these. They're going to tell us what they're doing, what they've stopped doing. And since it is a financial, we might as well peek in on a couple numbers just so we get a feel where the company stands. Their total assets here at the end of March of this year was $5.2 million. And their total liabilities was only $3.5 million. I say only because normally the liabilities is a lot larger than the assets, especially in a startup company. So this is reversed. It's upside down. And that's a good thing for a startup company. So on that basis, it looks pretty good. Revenues, however, eh, they've got to get something. They got nothing March this year, nothing March last year, but we know they made 5000 somewhere in between. I don't know when and I don't know why. But I do know they're going to have to work on this and get this taken care of in a hurry. Now, we've got information down here about things they have been up to, but also things that they've quit. You would think with a name like Principal Solar, 
they worked in solar. Well, I don't think so, not anymore. They tell us here that historically, our business plan has been to acquire, build, own, operate profitable large-scale solar generation facilities. However, the company has failed to secure sufficient project financing. So we do not consider starting any new large utility scale solar projects at this time. And I don't see any other information about solar projects. So maybe they're gonna change their name again. I don't know. They tell us that furthermore, the company has refocused its business strategy to invest in organizations and technologies that support the next generation of opportunities in traditional, renewable and clean energy sectors, as well as become an acquirer and operator of undervalued petroleum producing properties, which is really where they then started their focus. They made five deals last year between February and July of 2021. And this must just be the beginning of bigger things to come because every single one of these right here says the company made its first of a series of investments into, and then it talks about the company and they all have that sentence. So there must be more to come. Now they did get involved with two petroleum companies. First one here is Lazy Jack's Petroleum, a company having over 20 years of combined experience working in the Texas oil patch. And they specialize in bringing orphaned wells back into production. And they spend $560,000 to get this company. The other oil company they got was Double H Services, based out of Oklahoma and currently providing contracted oil field services to 16 companies. And they spent $220,000 on that. Then they had a deal here, which makes me scratch my head a little because I'm not quite sure how it all fits into things. I haven't done deep DD, so I really don't know how this all fits in. But they tell us here that they made a deal with Apollo LTMS, a division of IntelliMedia Networks, a U.S.-based company committed to the delivery of world-class media delivery solutions for customers worldwide. And they spent $420,000 on that. Now it says media delivery, so I'm not presuming it's any sort of delivery service like ParcelPal or USPS. I don't think they're moving packages. I think they're moving information. But whether it's through the blockchain or the internet, uh, TV, I don't know. More DD would need to be done. Then they've got two more companies here that have to do with electric vehicles, except big vehicles, big trucks, and maybe something even different than that. They made a deal here with E-Truck Transportation, an industry-leading heavy electric vehicle conversion company. And they spent $1.5 million on that, which is three times more than they spent on any of their other deals. So I got to figure it's pretty important to them. The other deal was with IPL Tech Electrics, an innovative developer of pure electric, heavy-duty commercial goods carriers with wide-range applications in mines, ports, infrastructure development, construction, and inter-warehouse goods transportation. And they spent $380,000 on that. You know, when I read that, I'm not picturing vehicles like trucks. I'm figuring it, it's something different, big machines, but not actually vehicles. But in either case, you can see they were very busy last year. And you know what? They ain't done yet. Nope, we got another deal sitting here on the table that came up in May, May 9th. Let's jump into this. They tell us here that Principal Solar Inc. announced that it has executed a definitive research and development agreement with Triad Pro Innovators. The agreement establishes a relationship for cooperative research and development for the purpose of creating a new power storage solution for the electric vehicle industry. Fact of the matter is, Triad is working on a solid state battery that they call the E cell. Solid state is where everybody wants to get. It's safe, it doesn't explode or burn. It's a lot cheaper to make. It delivers more power at a steadier rate and it lasts a lot longer. And here's the bottom line it's cheaper. It does everything you want for less money. 
So they tell us here that we believe Triad Z-Cell technology offers tremendous potential as a power storage solution for heavy electric vehicles, specifically for our fleet-focused heavy electric vehicle conversions and hybrid electric powertrains, which require unique capabilities supporting continuous operation with long charging cycles. You see, the major advantage of the Triad Pro's e-cell lies in the solid state technology, which allows electric vehicles to accept a charge at any rate. Obviously, that's a big deal. Another key e-cell advantage is the absence of typical battery chemical solutions that degrade with repeated charge-discharge cycles, giving the Triad Pro an e-cell a lifespan of 30,000 cycles. Your average EV battery lasts 10,000 cycles. It can be recharged 10,000 times. But every time you charge it, you get a little less of the battery, a little less of the battery, until you just only have 20% of your battery being used in those last couple hundred cycles, where these solid state batteries have virtually no degradation. It is under 2%, so it is virtually as strong on your last charge as it is your first charge. And again, I say, you get all this extra power at less expense, and that is exciting for everybody. Now, those next two pieces of news, both came out this month and both talk about the same thing. Let's jump into that first one here. This came out on June 9th. Principal Solar Inc. today announced its board of directors has approved a plan to spin off its E3 petroleum subsidiary into a separate public company focused on operating the company's oil and gas leases. They expound more on this in the next piece of news that came out on the 16th, just a couple days ago. Oil and natural gas prices remain near their highest levels in 14 years, according to sources such as the Goldman Sachs Group, Standard & Poor's, and the Energy Information Administration. The market outlook is expected to remain strong through 2023 and beyond. We believe now is the perfect time to spin off our oil and gas operations into a new, standalone, publicly traded company. This is for extracting more oil and gas from abandoned and orphaned fields. To that end, Principal Board of Directors has approved a plan to begin structuring the company's E3 petroleum subsidiary into a separate entity which will consist of Principal's oil and gas investments in Texas and Oklahoma, as well as its licensed environmentally friendly extraction technologies. So, you've got a spin out, folks. Anybody that owns PSWW prior to this deal, and I'm sure they're going to come off with a cutoff date. I don't see a cutoff date here. Maybe he'll tell us about it. But you've got to own this stock before the deal is closed, before their cutoff date, and they'll let you know what date that is. And as long as you own it, you're going to get free shares of their new company that goes out there, E3 Petroleum. It'll get its own ticker and you're going to have shares into it and it'll be based on however many you have over here. Now, if you want more information, lucky you. Tells us down here that the CEO is scheduled to be interviewed this week by Mr. Everett Jolly, the founder and CEO of Stock Day Media. During this interview, he will be discussing the E3 spinoff in further detail, as well as each company's current market opportunity. The interview will be aired next week. So, like I said, they've got lots of companies. Everything has to be doing something. I don't know what the media company is doing, so it would be good for me to find out. But we really do want to know about that E3 spin out. Because if you're in the company, and sure, you've got time to get in. It's not late. It's not too late. That's why I'm telling you now. We're going to be able to get into this. And however many shares of PSWW you own, they'll give you a prorated amount of shares in E3 Petroleum for absolutely free. All right, let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looks like. Well, of course, we're all looking at that huge green spike dead center of that chart. This is a six-month, four-hour chart for PSWW Principal Solar, and we're doing our charting on Think or Swim. If you don't have a trading platform or you'd just like to have a backup, a spare, in case Weebles isn't working one day, go over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free account, keep your account open, that's all you really got to do, and voila, you got yourself another trading platform you can use in case 
So this is PSWW six month, four hour chart, and she had a huge run there in the center, didn't she? That is giant, that went from a penny and a half up to just over seven and a half cents. So that's well over 400% gains right there. And you believe this ran on a piece of news that was just telling everybody the public offering was done. You wouldn't think that would matter, but this public offering started November of 2020. They were selling 96 million shares to attain $8.6 million of capital. And it was February 24th, it finally concluded. <laughs> I guess they were really excited. They had themselves a party, woo! And surged that bad boy all the way up here. It took a few days to get it there and a few days just to bring it down. And it crashed hard, folks. Came way under the 200, climbed back up to the 200, and has been riding this down like a carnival slide and has lost a lot of ground here in the last week. So much so that she is approaching her low bubble. And I expect if she hits that low bubble, I would presume there'd be a good strong bounce off of it. Just a feeling. Technicals are really sad, of course, to go along with that price. But you can see just a hint of all of the technicals starting to rescind and retreat. Let's look at that 20 day, one hour view. All right, she was riding under the 200 here. She hit her head on it quite a few times. Had a big poke of volume here, definitely pushed the price up, and then gave it all away. Lost it the same day. Down to the 200, through the 200, and for six days has been falling. And on this time period, over the last 20 days, that is the low. We are down here at just over a penny, 0 0.0113. However, we had a bounce just at the end of the day. Technicals, well, right there we have a crossover. Now, we are far below the signal line, which doesn't mean she can't grow in price. Oh, she surely can. You can get a rise all the way up to that signal line and then past it. You could end up with a jump all the way back up here to the 200, which seems to be her norm. This is where she's quite happy. She hardly deviated from this area at all. And now she's fallen. So I would anticipate her to come back. And now the 200's fallen itself. It's down to 0 0.021, where before it was up at 0 0.023. So I think it would come up to here easily because I don't see any reason for it to fall. And now that news is out and people know that there is a, a spin out on the table, heck yeah. I think this is going to bounce back, folks. And the technicals show it. We've got that crossover right here coming up. We've got the RSI pushing very strong, and the CCI is pushing in the right direction, crossing the neutral zone, going into the green. I like the way this is looking. And we can see the volume was very little back here, starting to get stronger, had a big poke, left some big bars, another big poke, some big bars, and then you've got that push at the end of today. Let's see what that five-day, five-minute looks like. We've just got our 200 coming into the picture. Now, the reason I like to point that out is a lot of times when you have a new SMA appear on the board, a big one, the price for some reason gravitates to it. Whether it be below or above, it just kind of gets sucked to it. So there's a very good chance this could get up to 0 0.018 from 0 0.013. Very likely. So we had a big bounce here at the end of the day, 5, 10, 15 minutes, and the volume started coming in. Did people just start to read the news? Are they just starting to poke around? Did somebody put something on Twitter? Technicals are getting stronger. There was a slight pullback, but we're not looking at a runner. We're looking at an entry price. You want to get in on this before they spin that out. They've already approved it. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And when this company gets spun out, it this is probably going to go up and you're going to get free shares in that new stock. So right now is a very good price. It's bouncing off of a low bubble of right around a penny. From a penny to two cents is 100% gains. A penny to three cents, 200% gains. You go from a penny to 10 cents, that's a thousand percent gains. Don't wait for this to get to two cents. You only make 500% gains when it hits a dime. This looks very good, folks. You know what the catalyst is. You know that they've got things going on. 
I would jump into that stock day media video uh, interview that's going to be up. I know I should be doing it, but he's already there and he's already going to do it. So plug into that, get some information about this. But remember, that interview is next week and this price is right now. How long do you want to wait before you consider getting into this? Remember, you can just get yourself a starter position. Grab yourself 20%, 30%. If it starts to climb, at least you bought some at a cheap price. Then you hear the stock media interview and you're really excited. You did get yourself a piece of this pie at a cheap price. Even if it's more expensive when you get your second piece, at least you know what you're getting into, right? I think it seriously behooves us to check out the Stock Day Media CEO interview that is going to be out next week. They're probably, hopefully, going to have the information we really need to hear. Like, what is the cutoff date for the E3 Petroleum spinout? What is the very last day that we're allowed to buy shares of PSWW that will count towards our free shares of E3 Petroleum? But I also want to know about those six other companies that they've gotten. Two electric truck companies, two oil companies, one media company, and a battery company. And most of those companies they've had for over a year. Surely they've made some progress. So maybe we're going to get some projections on revenues. How much and when. So between the interview next week and the information I didn't cover, there is some DD left over for you folks. But I like this company. But don't let my enthusiasm be any endorsement. You do your own DD. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks.